You're listening to Podium Podcast with former England rugby player Tom May and leading performance coach Simon Hartley. From locker room gossip to fascinating high performance insights, this is the show that invites some of the biggest names in the world of sport to discuss life on and off the field of play. Podium Podcast is brought to you by True Potential. To find out more, visit www.tplp.com. Welcome to part two of this Podium Podcast special with former Leeds Rhino legend Jamie Jones Buchanan. In this episode, we learn how Jamie managed the transition to life after pro sport, including his groundbreaking new role as Leeds Rhino's first ever head of culture, diversity and inclusivity. We'll also hear some fascinating insights into some incredible teammates that made up one of rugby league's greatest ever club teams, leading with one of sport's most inspiring figureheads. Jamie's former teammate and close friend, Kevin Sinfield. Enjoy the show. You talk about Kevin Sinfield a lot, and I can hear your passion for him as an individual and your closeness to him as a, as a friend and teammate, but he's turned to the dark side now, clearly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what Talk to us about, for those, for those that, that, that might not, uh, or may underestimate the impact that someone like that can have on on a team. He's clearly been very successful um, with how he works with players, both at a club level um, in union, and now he's he's going to be doing it uh, on a on a huge global stage, going to a World Cup uh, with England. What what is it about that guy? You've touched on him fair, fair amount, but what is it intrinsically about Kevin Sinfield that that leads to success, that generates this whole sort of motion behind him? Is is bordering on in, insanity. I mean, any rugby player that can league or union, tough gladiatorial contact sport. I think a lot of players sort of walk this tightrope of uh, genius to insanity. You know, falling over either side. You know, in a working class background, which a lot of us league players, Northerners are, you know, a lot of that falls into insanity because, you know, a lot of us don't have that stability of, of uh, home life and some of those other psychological um, elements of what makes somebody sane and level-headed and walking a tightrope. Uh, but what stands out about Kevin, and a lot of this is being revealed in his book that he's bringing out soon, he, he give me a, a, a bit of a, a, a draft copy to start going through, is rooted in a lot of his background, which you know, pick it up, and I'm no clinical psychologist, but his mum and dad were pretty political, um, almost activist in the in in social justice, and spent a lot of time on sort of picket lines and try to do the right thing for others. And whilst Kevin won't um, won't suggest that he's, he's politically minded, you see that in the heart of his nature. So he wants every environment to be really clinical and clean, and uh, follow a almost black and white set of rules. For the safety of the people within that environment, by the way, um, and quite often it's got to suit him. Now I'll, I won't lie, and I'll tell him to his face. You know, if if you sort of go and mess up his environment, he don't like it. He kicks off. There's not much room um, for error or breathing space either. So you learn to walk a, a a tight line, the party line with him. But what you understand is, if you can do that, that there's nothing that he will not do for you as a teammate, and that shines brighter now than it ever did as a player with what he's done for Rob Burrow. Uh, but it, it, there were lots of signs of that, almost on a daily basis with Kev. So it's not surprising to see him do what he's done, known him sin, having known him since I was 12 years old. And my, my favourite moment of my career, um, symbolically looking back, was when I tore my quad in 2015 Challenge Cup semi-final, live on BBC Two. And that meant that that was the last game I was going to play with Kev because he was moving on. We got to the Challenge Cup final and he rang me and said, I want you to come and lift the trophy with me at Wembley. And I'm like, are you mad, mate? I'm not going up there like John Terry did in his suit and not. <laughs> but um, sure enough, he did. The one in record fashion, I went up there and he insisted, along with the team, uh, you know, in the vein of, listen, whilst he didn't play today, you're no less a part of this group. You're every bit a part of who we are. So you're coming up and you And I lifted the trophy with him and, you know, through one of my most adverse periods of my career, I went up and did something that underpinned and underlined why that group was so successful because Kev was the cultural architect and the nucleus around which that spirit 
that um, that 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 team, that group, revolved and uh, he, he managed it. Now look, the Leeds Rhinos, and I use the word augmentation or symbiosis. Gary Hetherington was another anomaly of a human being who run that organisation. And on the back of what Kev did in the success, he commercially, corporately, um, from a club point of view, made the Leeds Rhinos into what it is today, which is an amazing entity, on the backdrop of the contextual rugby league environment. You know, when you put it on the backdrop of what the rest of the rugby league looks like, it shines like a diamond in a goat's backside to quote Richard Rawlins from Fast and Loud. <laughs> that is a brilliant phrase. <laughs> It does, and sometimes that's our weakness. It's our weakness because you know that, that can lead to all kinds of different perceptions in and around game, external, internal. But yeah, Kev's a very, very unique human being, um, and you know he's uh, all the bits he tried. He, he, he literally tried ringing me three minutes before I got on here, and I don't tell him, but I ignored it. I ignored it because. I, I thought I'm going to be late for you. I'm going to be late for you. What does it say there? Ten fifty-seven, and I'm <laughs> eleven. So sorry, Kev. I'll ring you back in a bit. He wouldn't, he, he wouldn't have had that in his changing room. He no, wouldn't, he, he wouldn't be. The, he wouldn't want it the other way around. Do you know what? It's funny. So when Kev come in, uh, director rugby at Rhinos, he put all these signs up: no mobile phones at gym. Right. So I'm like, all right, fair enough. And he's, as you know, you're working for RFL as well. So he's got Wayne Bennett, like the rugby league guru coach of the world, right? Um, as, as England coach. And he was doing a training session in our gym. And I've walked in and Wayne Bennett's on his phone like this. And I'm looking up at Kevin, I'm going, oh, where do I go here? Are you going to hold him to account as well? Um, but no, mate. And listen, I was best man at his wedding. He was best man at mine. But he would tear shreds off me at any moment and would do now if I wasn't in line with what our beliefs and values were within the context of, a, of an environment. Obviously, I'm in my own house, can do what I want. And, <laughs> and why that's, that's important, right, is Kev's only ever been to my house once and I've lived, I, I thought, I, I moved into his house in 2009, been here once, right? I've never been in his house and he's he's been in there about six, seven years, which which highlights this point that we're as precious about those boundaries as we are the ones where we coexist professionally and as great mates as well. Uh, it's a weird but very effective uh, relationship. We hope you don't mind us interrupting the show with a very short message about our partners at the Podium Podcast, True Potential. True Potential provide wealth management that's simple, effective and unique. Their expert advice Innovative investments, leading technology and dedicated support are all designed to help you do more with your money. Visit www.tplp.com now to find out more. Capital at Risk. True Potential Wealth Management and True Potential Investments are authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. Thanks for listening. Now, let's get you back to this week's show. Sounds great. I, I'm, I'm, re I'm really interested to see what he uh, what he does with England because some of the environment, the stories from the environment prior to prior to his arrival were were uh, fairly fairly different. Um, hey, listen, we always finish this podcast with uh, with four of the same questions. Uh, hopefully, I'm thinking you're probably going to have them nailed, uh, and I've got an idea, Simon. In fact, I'm going to ask Simon the first one before you get to answer, Jamie. Um, if Jamie wasn't a pro athlete, what do you think he would have been? A priest. Right, fair enough. I like that. Uh, it definitely, I, I was still going down those lines. Someone where, that can actually, re I won't call you an influencer as per se, as many people would think about it right now. But in terms of those, in terms of those people that can energise um, a group of people, um, whether that be from a from a from a faith perspective or, or within within a corporation, I think I think Jamie would have been outstanding. But in, you're going to say something completely different now, I reckon. So if you weren't a professional athlete, Jamie, what do you think you would have been? Was there another vocation that, that took your fancy? I love that. I love what what Simon said there. I, so I, I'd argue that I would have been a prophet, and the difference being is a priest 
a very clever have been the priest in the very methodical, the accurate, and they get things absolutely they've got to do because a priest was acting uh, on behalf of the people to God. You can't get that wrong. Whereas prophets are abstract, imaginative, and I get things wrong on a daily basis, but do it in a fashion where people go, he's either really clever or he's really, he's, he's, he needs help, basically. <laughs> so I, there's, uh, there's, there's uh, the film, um, as good as it gets, which is, is another um, opportunity to watch a documentary about our generation of players on Amazon. Um, and I, I talk about prophets, priests and kings, I'd definitely be a prophet. But listen, something a bit more tangible. I grew up and there were two things, um, and I probably touched on them both. I talked a lot about one of them was being a social worker and maybe cultural diversity and inclusion in many ways is like that, you know, helping people, looking after people. And the other one was an architect, which was very opposite ends of the, uh, the spectrum. And the architecture, I think, is probably designing in, in, in environments. And I, I love buildings, mate. I love I love houses and um, really enjoying the process of going through my wife. I've got four boys and we're in a three-bed semi in Bramley. So if, you know, when you've got six adults in, in the house, you've got to spread that out a little bit. Um, but I, I love I love restoration. Um, I mentioned fast and loud there, though, the idea of finding a, a, an old car in a barn and bringing it back to life in a bespoke, contemporary way, I... I, I it draws me. And so, you know, when you find your enjoyment, time flies, that's when you love doing what you're doing and being around people and uh, tinkering, certainly in restoring old things or building new things, being creative are probably two of my favourite. Simon, these four questions generally with people that we're, we're chatting to, I don't know where they're going to go. <laughs> I'm looking down here and I reckon I can answer most of them for Jamie, just get, just from the energy and the information that we've had during this podcast. So, who is the person you most admire in sport and in business? I reckon I know the first one. <laughs> Kevin Sinfield, um, business really quickly. I, this is what's strange. I wouldn't like, I don't think, either of them, but the uh, two would be uh, Elon Musk and Steve Jobs. And they're, they're, listen, they're, they're both top of the tree for obvious reasons. I, I was an Apple fan from 98, so that's before iPhone, that's before people really knew what Apple was. And the reason being for both of them is that they're very imaginative, innovative and abstract in the thinking. So Elon Musk, for example, has said that he wants to take his final breath on Mars. A lot of people go, that's just stupid. Like, But it's people like him, to quote Steve Jobs, who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world and inevitably do. And why mm. I like him is that, if you remember, I don't know if you remember growing up in the 80s, one of my favourite films, Back to the Future, and so that was about mid mid eighties, and you basically got a film that's trying to predict what it's going to be look like in in uh, twenty fifteen. Twenty first of October, twenty fifteen is the date that it went forward to the future. In. So then there's flying cars and the suits where it blows you up and uh, dries you off. And when we actually get here, in reality, there's no flying cars. And what happened was somewhere we stopped innovating with tangible analog. Um, bits of technology. So the Concorde went away, the space shuttles went away, and it all become about information. But what Elon Musk, I believe, is doing now is bringing the tangibles back, the, the analog, the cars, the, the actual engineering, and he's bringing that together with technology. And we need that. We need that. We need, we need you know, to go into the future to deal with climate change. We've absolutely got to do that. And if you think about what Steve Jobs did, He's enabled that to happen in a, it's almost a monopoly, but in an in a ecosystem of, a, uh, of an example of what an iPhone, a MacBook, uh, iTunes, and all the rest of it that fits seamlessly together. He's built the model. He's built the model that Elon Musk is, is sort of following. I love it. Maybe, love it. maybe Elon Musk will now uh, put a food blender on the back of a car. Because that's what you need when you go to the future. You need a food blender on the back of the car. So that you can <laughs> yeah. Turn banana skins or banana... Oh, the, yeah, the flux capacitor. Well, <laughs> they don't have any uh, weapons-grade uranium knocking about, are they? In, uh, in local, in local uh, shop. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be cool. <laughs> Third question. If you've got some funds to invest, what are you investing it in? Um. 
my oh it sounds corny this um so I, i've achieved everything that i wanted to achieve i've got everything that i want to got I, i've got nothing material my my sort of financial goals at the minute are, in, are invested in legacy so i've got four boys and um what i'd like to do when when i sit and take my dying breath is that uh, my uh, whatever i've financially got is is going to be passed on from a, a in a patriarchal sense to my children and uh, I'm a, listen. I'm a big fan of the way that they live in the Eastern world, which is where, you know, over here when you get to 16, kids disappear at university. You don't see them again till Christmas. Um, I don't want that. I want my kids to live next door or in house, and I want to build my house sideways so that they can stay here because my joy is in my family. So if I had a load of money to invest, it would be to invest in a, in that ecosystem from a, an environment point of view where we can all live together. And then I'd probably build, I'd build my own little town. I want to build my own town so that we're self-sustainable, uh, eco-friendly. And, and I don't mean that in a, I'm going to, uh, I'm a big climate change activist, uh, but I, I love the idea of walking, being in the fresh air. And you know, if I could build a doctor's surgery and take some strain off NHS in Bramley, for Bramley people, I'd love to do that. You know, I've just been thinking about whether to move churches um, this first time I've met this public. But uh, the reason being is my church is on the other side of Leeds and I'm thinking, does it need to be in Bramley where I, where I am, where I can be a little bit more conducive with it? So my investment would be on uh, in, my, in my local community, starting with my wife and four boys. Brilliant. Yeah. And there's one film that you can watch for the rest of your life. What's it going to be? <laughs> <laughs> Hoping that my wife's with me for the rest of my life. It'd have to be Snatch. We both love Snatch. You know, Vinnie Jones in there. Yeah, uh, there's lots of between. It's a little bit better than Lockstock, uh, mm. but that's our go to film when that comes on. Big fan of uh, some of, um, oh, and Harry Potter's, mate. Harry Potter's like well, you could survive on that forever, couldn't you? Oh, yeah. you know, you know, if I could, if I could create a toy, you know, the uh, Men in Black when you can flash that weapon, it makes your mind go blank. Can you imagine this? You watch the whole Harry Potter, make your mind go blank so you, you don't know you've seen it, and watch it again. Like, <laughs> even, even even when you've watched it for the 10th time, it's like, it never gets boring. It, it's, it's genius. Unbelievable. Love it. Some great answers. That has been, I reckon, what up there in the top two podcasts that we've done so far. And we've done some. That's been brilliant, Jamie. I've loved it. Oh, great you. having you on. I've enjoyed it. I love, I love chatting. I love waffling. it. <laughs> <laughs> No, energy's been the same. Thank you very much. And enjoy this evening. I know you've, you, well, the, as we record, you've got a game tonight. So I uh, hope that all goes well. Thank you. Me too. Um, yeah, it's good. It's a good weekend. Uh, men, the, the uh, reserves are playing first. So a lot of our academy men are playing. Women are playing over at Uddersfield. Tomorrow, our wheelchair team is playing London Roosters in Birmingham. They must be meeting halfway. Uh, and then we've got our, our learning disability Rugby league team playing as well uh, Saturday. And then our netball team is playing at the first direct arena. Massive event on Sunday. Um, and we're all going there to watch that as well. So, big weekend of sport. Love it. Brilliant. Enjoy it. Thank you. Take care, mate. See you soon. Cheers, guys. You're listening to Podium Podcast with former England rugby player Tom May and leading performance coach Simon Hartley. From locker room gossip to fascinating high performance insights, this is the show that invites some of the biggest names in the world of sport to discuss life on and off the field of play. Podium Podcast is brought to you by True Potential. To find out more, visit www.tplp.com.